If you want to buy a brand new graphics card in 2024, you're in the right place. Throughout this video, we're going to go through all of the best GPUs at all budgets, all price points, so you can find the perfect graphics card for you. We're also going to walk you through the key differences between NVIDIA, AMD, and now even into Arc. So by the end of this video, you'll be an expert on everything ray tracing, FSR, DLSS, the works. So let us jump right in and help you find the perfect new companion right after a short word from this video sponsor. NZXT's new Lift 2 mouse has arrived, bringing aesthetic class and game-changing performance. Featuring a 26,000 DPI sensor, optical switches, a 60 gram weight, and 8,000 hertz of polling rate, this mouse is ideal for fast-paced FPS and relaxing RTS alike. The Lift 2 comes in ergonomic or symmetrical grip styles in both black and white, so there's the perfect mouse for everyone. Grab yours today with the link down below. Let's kick off with a quick refresher. What exactly is a graphics card and how much does it matter? Well, a whole stinking lot, that's what. The graphics card is the single most important piece of your entire gaming PC, and it will directly dictate the frame rate, settings, and resolution that you can achieve in games. Sure, it will need to be paired with a high quality CPU or processor as well, but you should always put as much money as possible into your graphics card and then build the rest of your parts list around that. For example, let's say you have a thousand pounds or dollars or euros or whatever to spend on a gaming PC, well, you only really know how much money you have to spend on your case or your motherboard or your power supply, let's say, once you've factored in a really nice, powerful graphics card and then you sort of see if you can squeeze everything else in and then make some adjustments, rather than picking like a 150 pound case that you love the look of and then having to skimp on your graphics card. Doesn't make any sense. Getting a little bit more technical, the graphics card actually contains multiple components, the main one really being a GPU or the graphics graphics processing unit, and this handles thousands of complex calculations a second, which is designed from NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel. This chip is then placed on a board with memory modules, VRMs, power lines, and a whole lot more, before the manufacturer then places their own special cooling units on top to allow them to run as fast as possible, whilst running as cool and quiet as they can. And this is actually a very good example of why a lot of graphics cards are dual branded. So here we have a AMD 7800 XT, but then you see there's a power color logo on the top of it. AMD designed the GPU, power color put everything else together. There's actually quite a lot of differences between the different cards from different vendors. Some will use completely unique cooling designs, like NVIDIA's self-made Founders Edition cards. Others try to be small and thin, whilst many try to be as big and heat disparate as possible. Yeah, that's right. I just made up a word. What are you going to do about it? Ow, I just walked into a wall. Variety is the spice of life, as they say, but it is worth noting that usually the gaming performance of these cards will be extremely similar, if not exactly the same. So overspending on a graphics card is not usually worth it when you're looking at the same GPU class. Now, I do have a cheat sheet for this, but be aware that this is not a one size fits all because there are so many variables, but generally speaking, do pay very close attention to how many fans a card actually has, because if you're looking at a two fan card and you can spend like an extra 10, 15 pounds or dollars to upgrade it to one that has three, then chances are that's probably gonna perform a little bit better and be worth the money. But it's not always the case because some fans could be bigger, so two might be better than three really small ones. And also different vendors have different like GPU fan profiles. So you could find that even though it could perform better out of the box, it runs perhaps a little bit too loud. So you have to change that yourself. So always look at reviews, but more fans are usually better. Once you have settled on a budget for your card, you'll next be choosing a side. Team blue, green, or red. It's just like the end of Mass Effect 3 all over again, but this time there's no DLC to save you. <laughs> I'm going downhill. The market leader at the moment is NVIDIA, and to their credit, for very good reason. They've been in the GPU game for around about 25 years, and they consistently make great products, although recently at somewhat questionable prices. NVIDIA are all about giving you as many features as possible, and they even put dedicated hardware on the GPU die itself to enable these to run smoothly. Popular examples include AI voice isolation for voice chat, frame rate boosting DLSS super resolution and frame generation, and of course, RTX ray tracing. And ray tracing was regarded as the next big thing roughly five years ago or so, but I think it's fair to say that whilst it's definitely come on a long way, it's still not really something that everyone must turn on, and if your graphics card doesn't support it as well as like another one, it's like a, a deal breaker. I think in my opinion, there's only really been maybe two or three games that have been so much better, and I would say I've actively enjoyed more as a direct result of ray tracing. So perhaps it's not the absolute game changer that NVIDIA 
Nvidia want it to be just yet. But make no mistake, when the technology works, it is simply stunning. And it takes your games up a serious notch in quality, with reflections, shadows, and ambient occlusion to die for. And that's die in game, not, you know, actually dying. That would be silly. The only thing I would actively die for would be the world's best apple crumble. But I make that already. The issue, and real problem with ray tracing, is that despite the horsepower of Nvidia's latest 40 series of graphics cards, turning it on still lowers the frame rate by some margin, and also increases the in-game latency. So while this tech definitely can be amazing for single player games where you've already got a decent frame rate, in multiplayer, most people are just going to want to turn it off. And this is exactly why my favourite feature of the Nvidia cards is DLSS, as this is technology that actually boosts your frame rate, reduces the latency, and best of all, it's in a huge range of titles. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it works by rendering the game at a lower resolution, and then using the AI hardware on the GPU itself to upscale that frame back up to the native resolution, giving you a much higher frame rate at essentially the same level of image quality. So great! Fantastic! Go out and buy NVIDIA, right? Well, it's not quite so simple, because the problem with most of these NVIDIA features is that they're locked down, so you have to have an NVIDIA card to actually use them, and then also that they do seem to charge quite a price premium versus their AMD and Intel counterparts in order to actually get those features. So if you're not that fussed about the features, then you're paying more for something you probably won't use. But to be honest, chances are you'll definitely use some of them. The question is more whether they're actually worth it in the first place. Perhaps then it's worth considering something else. Maybe Team Red. AMD, and if you liken these to British supermarkets, if Nvidia is your Waitrose or your M&S, then AMD is a bit like your Sainsbury's or Tesco. You get quality goods, but you're not paying extortionate prices. There you go, British people watching this. Oh, why are you saying dollars? Why are you saying dollars? We say dollars and pounds. That was a supermarket joke just for you, and all the Americans are gone now. Is this what you wanted? And to properly understand some of the differences, you first need to know that games need to store textures and other game information in what we call video memory, or VRAM. And at the moment, there's a lot of AMD cards that come with more VRAM than Nvidia's offerings, again, at roughly the same price, or actually sometimes even less. Generally speaking, you want 8 gigabytes of VRAM for 1080p, 12 gig for 1440, and 16GB gig or more for 4K. But it's not an exact science as there are plenty of outliers that need a little bit more or way less. The performance on AMD's latest GPUs are generally awesome, and pretty much all of the best value cards these days are AMD's, with the cost per frame graphs clearly showing there's money to be saved if features get shaved. I wrote that one myself. Now to AMD's credit, they do have their own free-to-adopt technologies in games, with the main two being FSR and FSR frame generation. These don't actually require any AMD-specific hardware to run, but in my experience, sadly, they don't work quite as well as Nvidia's tech, with FSR looking noticeably less sharp than DLSS, and FSR frame gen is barely in any games, though this is improving. It's worth bearing in mind too that they absolutely can run ray tracing, it's not like an Nvidia specific thing, it's just it won't be the exact same level of experience as Nvidia's top end cards, but it's definitely worth trying out, especially in games that have a lighter implementation. And hey, if you can get more performance in the games you actually care about most anyway, potentially for less money, then as I say, do these features even matter? But don't go thinking that all AMD graphics cards are really cheap, because this one, the top XTX, still costs around about £1,000 or dollars. <laughs> Granted, it's a lot better now, and you can get them for nearer the 900 but yes, if you buy a big card with a big cooler, it can get very expensive. Which is exactly why you might want to consider the third option, Intel Arc. They actually have cards that start at around about $165 for something that is genuinely very, very good. I think it's fair to say that this time last year, it would be very easy to discount them. But in 2024, they actually deliver the goods for gamers on a budget, as they often hit the same performance as their AMD counterparts, in some cases actually exceeding them. High quality art cards have enough punch to dabble in 1080p and 1440p gaming at roughly 60 frames a second. 
just do be aware that Intel is very much still learning, and there are some games, with Starfield at the time of filming being the main one, that don't actually run as well as they should. So we can't guarantee a complete idiot-proof experience on Team Blue, but the situation has improved so much, this is a great way to bag yourself a bargain. But enough jibber-jabber, I know. I just want to see the best cards. That's why I'm here. All the talk. All right. Let's get on with the best cards you can buy in 2024. And yes, before I forget, current pricing on everything will be featured with our affiliate links listed down below. Kicking things off with the best budget GPU, you're looking at one of three, as prices will vary and sales can often shake things up a lot. At the time of filming, the cheapest card is the Intel Arc A580, and this is a great pick for gamers on a budget. As we've already discussed, performance is awesome for the money, and if you're mainly playing games like Fortnite and Apex, you're in for one heck of a good time. If you do want a little bit more, then the A750 is a worthy upgrade, as depending on price, you can hit smoother frame rates at great sale price, or alternatively, go for the AMD RX 6600, which we know to have more stable drivers. It's definitely worth remembering though that Arc does come with AV1 support, which could be a big deal for game streamers. Moving to the upper end of 1080p gaming, or even some light 1440p, then we actually have two new cards from Nvidia and AMD, the RX 7600 and the RTX 4060. If you have been a true PC-centric, and if you watch this video all the way through, then this is exactly the example we were talking about, with near identical performance on both cards, but then a higher price on the Nvidia side to account for the DLSS and better ray tracing support. This means that the 4060 will be a much better all-rounder than the 7600, but costing roughly 20% more, you all have to actively want all of those features to make it worth the upgrade. Please, by the way, do also bear in mind the previous generation of graphics cards, in particular from AMD, with my favourite being the RX 6700 XT, as it doesn't cost more, I mean we're talking like 20, 30 pounds a lot of the time, or dollars, Americans too, uh, versus the RTX 4060, but that's a card that has 4 gig more VRAM with a total of 12, and that means it's going to be more suitable potentially for longevity, and it does also have more horsepower in the first place, so you will get more performance. But obviously deals like this, sort of come and go availability, we don't know when it's going to end, so just, yeah, check my affiliate links down below when trying to keep you updated the best we can with what's on offer. Moving on to 1440p high refresh rate gaming, there's actually a bit of a gap in price here, as there's only the RTX 4060 Ti that will fill this £400 slot, and frankly, it's just not worth buying due to its limited 8GB of VRAM. So instead, feast your eyes on the AMD RX 7700 XT. This is a card that at launch was just a bit too expensive, but has now settled into a price much nearer the 425 mark, and as such, it is now really easy to recommend. This card packs that all-important 12GB of VRAM and excels in gaming at all resolutions, but in particular 1440p. If this tickles your fancy, but you're still after something a little bit extra, then you can move on towards the £500 or dollar mark. And all things considered, the RX 7800 XT has to be my favourite GPU on sale today, with the main reason being that it just has so much performance across a wide range of resolutions. It's not what I would call affordable, but it's definitely not extortionate either, but then it does also come with that all-important 16 gig of VRAM, so this card is going to last you a decent while. The 7800 XT tops out our cost per frame chart when we're looking specifically at the higher end, proving its value if you want ultra settings, and generally speaking it offers all of the performance that any gamer needs, even at 4K resolution. Now it's also worth bearing in mind that Nvidia's 4070 cards are pretty good at this price point too, though as you'd expect, value isn't as good as AMD's with higher asking prices. The good news though is that the RTX experience picks up a lot here, with highly playable frame rates in most ray tracing scenarios, especially when using DLSS and frame gen to help you along the way. However, both cards have 12GB of VRAM only, so I'm hesitant to recommend the 4070 Super, as it's fine today, but will it be fine in 3 years time? It's big money for only 12GB. When we get to the high end though, things definitely start to change, as it's no longer all about the best value and raw FPS, it is about the experience. If you're spending big money on a gaming PC, you want it to be way better than consoles, and suddenly, having sky high frame rates only might not be enough. Dare I say it, but Nvidia is probably your best bet. Now, I know, a lot of people won't agree with this, they'll be throwing stuff at the screen, and that's fine. The disagreeing with me bit, not the throwing stuff at the screen, like, respect your stuff. 
Especially when you look at the graphs, both the RX 7900 XT and the 7900 XDX beat NVIDIA's RTX 4070 Ti Super in average FPS, with the XT costing way less than the 70 Ti Super. And this is perfect if you play multiplayer games, as you can reap all of the rewards of low latency, high refresh rates and epic settings, but you will have that voice at the back of your head. And this is something that we realized when we put my friend Rob's PC together. It was his first time building a gaming PC. It is a good video. You can check that out at the right-hand corner of your screen. He had a thousand pounds to spend on a GPU, and it all came down to a simple question, which was, would you be disappointed if there were settings that were grayed out to you, or maybe you couldn't turn the ray tracing all the way up to the max? And when you spent a thousand pounds on a graphics card, the answer was yes. And I think this is something that a lot of people will feel if they go for the AMD alternative. Again, I know I can hear the people shouting at the screen, but my honest truth is that if you are spending this kind of money on a gaming PC, then you want the best. And suddenly using the second best ray tracing GPU, the second best upscaler, and a very limited frame generation tool does become more of a big deal. And the simple fact of the matter is, if you do go for the 16 gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti Super or the 16 gigabyte RTX 4080 Super, then you're just not gonna have to worry about those compromises. The only, big only in air quotes there, compromise you're gonna have to make is really on the price. And if you're spending this sort of money, again, We've already committed to price. So yes, if you do care most about value, cost per frame above everything else, or you only play multiplayer, or frankly, you don't give a rat's ass about ray tracing, then absolutely, AMD is best. Go for AMD and save yourself some money. But if you care about having the best gaming PC, RT and all, then Team Green at the high end has to be the way to go. Fortunately for me though, that is about as controversial as the end of this video should get because water is wet and the best graphics card you can buy in 2024 is the RCX 4090. This thing is a beast and yes, you'll probably need to take a new mortgage to be able to buy one. Is it a sensible purchase for gaming? No, absolutely not. It is terrible value for money, but there is no dispute that the performance from this thing is frankly absurd as it can handle any game at seemingly any resolution and settings. I use one in my personal rig and it has been near flawless for 4K gaming at 120 frames a second with all of the bells and whistles enabled. Games look insane and they feel it too. This is the definition of overkill, but if that's what you want, go right ahead and buy it. This thing is essentially unchallenged. And just like that then everybody, there we are. Those are all of the GPUs you can get in 2024, ranked, and I really do hope this video has been useful, that you've learned something. If it has, please smash the like button and get yourself subscribed. Let us know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Have I been too controversial or have I got it bang on the money? And of course, if you do wanna check out current pricing on literally anything that was featured in this video, you can find it listed down below with our affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not check out NZXT? NZXT's Function 2 keyboard brings beauty to your desk with an eye-grabbing design that is perfect for gaming. Featuring linear NZXT swift optical switches, you get super fast key actuation that can even be customized in software to match your personal preferences. Throw in gorgeous RGB lighting, hot swappable switches, and double shot PBT keycaps into the mix, and you've got the complete package. It comes in both black or white, and full size or mini tin keyless. Grab yours today with the link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.